Knowing what we know now, we could have done things so much more differently. Hey guys, my name is Wilson. Today you're in for a treat because I'm going to be sharing with you some of the behind the scenes of our journey. If you've been following along the journey, you would know that we have an ice cream shop called 720 Sweets. We sell ice cream, bubble tea, we're national across Canada and international as we have one location in China, Beijing. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna share the news with you. We have been bought out, okay? So yes, I know we have aspirations to hit 100 locations in five years, but obviously we fell short. As a result, we are getting grilled, or I am getting grilled by Jason behind the motives of why I'm selling 720 Suites and how this whole process has transpired and how everything worked out. Nonetheless, we're super, super excited because now it is in better hands and our job is finally done. If you guys wanna learn more, make sure you smash the like button because that's just gonna help us out a little bit more with the YouTube algorithm. Without further ado, I am now prepared to get grilled by Jason. Awesome! Welcome to this session. <coughs> so, four years, didn't make it to 100. Nope. Why did you decide to sell it now? To be completely honest with you, the environment in this industry, like knowing what I know now, I understand how competitive the landscape is. How much more fundamentals I need to put in in order for me to achieve the goal that I've been always wanting to do, which is 100 jobs. And knowing what I know now, I think now is a good time to part ways with it because it would take me another five years to build the fundamentals right, to, to start off right again, right? Um, yeah, and that's why that we decided to sell a little bit earlier than I expected. Actually, not really early, it's within the trajectory of our timeline. We built this four to five years ago, knowing the fact that we wanna sell in the next four or five years. We just fell short of our goal of 100 shops. But nonetheless, we still were able to go international. And I guess, what was the reason for the shortfall? Reason for the shortfall is because I don't know what I don't know. Going into this industry, <clears throat> I didn't really know the fundamentals of what food and beverage is. Like when we first went into this ice cream shop business, it, we, we set out to create an ice cream store. That's what we set out to do. Within opening doors, for like two, three weeks, we were slammed every single day and people were inquiring about franchise, which got my heart racing, which got me tickling, which got my ambition to be off the roof. And that was when I settled the expectation and told the team that, hey, you know what? Instead of doing an ice cream shop, we're gonna become a franchise chain. We're gonna create this chain and blow up to a hundred locations like Pink Berry, like all these different crazy stores. And then we're gonna sell it in four to five years. Right, um, that was the ambition. So instead of creating an ice cream store or instead of just creating an ice cream store, we ended up in the franchise business at the same time. So there was so much that we had to learn. It was such a steep learning curve, let alone uh, like us trying to build an ice cream shop. Let alone, it's just crazy. Like knowing what we know now, we could have done things so much more differently if we were given a chance to redo it, mm. right? So I think even if I were to rewind four years ago, um, we would still be where we are today. We would still be short of the 100 shops because we don't know what we don't know. Mm. That's the reason why we did not hit that goal. Do you think you would still not be able to hit the goal if you only focused on 720? Because you do have multiple projects ongoing, which mm -hmm. is really different from other people. Right, 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 people, right. People, restaurant owners, are like, just focus on that business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think 
So for the listeners, like we actually run a few different businesses and uh, 720 Suites is just part of my profile and portfolio. Um, just to give them a little bit more context. Um, but I don't think so. I, I think it would still be in the same way if I were 100% focused on it. Um, mainly because, like I said, I don't know what I don't know. And the mistakes that I need to make, I still need to make. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Yeah. If I were to fully focus 100% on it, I probably would hit around 30 stores by now but still not to the level that we aspire to become, which is 100 stores. Because I feel like as we progress, as we build more stores, there will be more problems, there will be more ups, more downs. Um, and at the end of the day, I feel like that unless I found a mentor to begin with, unless there was someone to show me the ropes to begin with, there was no way that I was gonna hit 100 stores. Whereas right now, if I were to repeat what I'm doing right now, I think hitting 100 stores in five years is doable, but requires a lot more resources than I expect, right? In this whole business that we have running from the get-go, no, not once have I ever thought of um, raising funds from other people um, and then to start strong with it and to have a big, big team to, to create what we need to create, the infrastructure, the logistics, um, and everything in order for us to hit that goal. Uh, but now knowing what I know, I think we can hit that 100 store goal if we were to redo it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, now that you've sold it, it's been acquired, um, what are you moving into then? Before you said e-commerce, you know? Yeah. I still think that e-commerce is the way to go. Like, just to give you an example, with 720 Suites, we have roughly 30 to 40 employees. We have six locations. Um, with my events business, we have over 100 staff. And yet, the revenue that we hit is nowhere close to some of my other buddies who are in e-commerce. They have a four-man operation and they're hitting mid-seven-figure mark. We're talking about five million dollars, six million dollars, and yet the infrastructure is so much more lean. Whereas my events business, we need over a hundred staff in order for me to be able to hit that seven-figure mark, right? With the ice cream business, how many ice cream do we need to sell in order for us to be able to hit that goal? It's just so much more difficult to scale, and so much more difficult for us to build a brand because it's a brick and mortar store and it's people are much more likely to try out different concepts, especially in Vancouver, than to have that lo brand loyalty to stick with that one brand. Um, so all in all, I really believe that the future is definitely e-commerce and that's the reason why, you know, with, with all the different experiences that I was able to gather for the last 10 years doing business, I think like moving into e-commerce is definitely uh, a huge benefit on my hand um, because now I have these business acumen and logistics and handling with people, HR, business, marketing, all these things piling up. What do you think is two of the biggest lessons from some that you think our restaurant owners need to hear? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Number one is really have a product that is proven. And what I mean by proven is that it is good. That not, it's product that's so good that people will always come back for it, okay? So not only is it good, but it's a product that people will always come back for it. Have a product that is like that, have a hero item that is like that. And if you don't have a hero item like that, do not get into this field. Do not get into the food and beverage field if you don't have a product that people will always come back for. Here an example of a different brand that has something like that. Mm. What's your go-to place after you party, for example? 
I, for me, every time after a party, I would always go back to this Chinese restaurant to eat their rice, rice, rice bowl. Mm. Because it is soupy, it is flavorful, but yet there's no MSG. It's something that I truly enjoy. It's their staple item, mm -hmm. right? So what that means is that in a year, I would go at least once a month, at the very least. Um, and that's what I mean by an example of an item that is like really good and that people will go back again and again for, yeah. right? So if you enter into this field, if you want to create a restaurant, if you want to serve people your recipe, you better have an item that people would always be like, ooh, this is great. And always ask that second question, will you come back for it again? And if the question and if the answer is that, yeah, this is amazing, but it's a probably a one-time thing, then you know there's a lot more improvements that you need to be able to make. Mm -hmm. right? and that is something that I highly, highly recommend any entrepreneurs, any restauranteurs, that if they want to get into the business, it's for them to really consider. Mm -hmm. as, number two. What's number two? Number two is the importance of your community. I think it rides on the first one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, like as a restaurant, um, there's no point of being slammed, being super busy within the first four or five months because those are fake. Those are the honeymoon phase, right? Um, some restaurants, they, they open doors and then they have a spike because of fad, because of promotion, because of marketing, and boom, they go back to the bottom. Right? That's a really poor sign. Some restaurants, they open up and they never pick up. Mm. That is also a poor sign. What you want is to create a restaurant that starts here. That when people come and try it, they're like, wow, this is amazing. Let me introduce me to my friend. I love the atmosphere here. I love the owner here. I love the community. I love what they stand for. I love everything about this place. I'm going to bring my friend. I'm going to refer someone over. One people bring two people, two turns into four, four turns into eight. And as it grows steadily, year by year, it will pick up where it will be always busy because it resembles something, right? So the second feedback or the second lesson that I would share with people is that create your community, create something that is amazing and start creating your community that helps people promote your item, helps people promote your store, stand for something, have a great culture within your own food and beverage, because that's what gets people to come back. That's what gets people talking about it. That's what gets people to have this community where they feel belonged. And then when they feel belonged, that's when your business is gonna be thriving because they come back every two weeks. All you need is a thousand customers. All you need is a thousand loyal customers that come back every two weeks. Then you're golden. You're gonna be always packed. A thousand customers. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. And I guess like, what's, now that you're leaving the food industry, right, mm -hmm. what do you think is the future for it? I think 720 Suites will still be thriving to a certain extent. Um, when the new investors bought it, um, they have big plans for it. I'm super excited. Like for me, it's actually um, Aubrey. Aubrey dropped by from Brunei just a week ago and we had a chat and she was asking me, hey, you know what, Wilson? Um, do you feel really sad on selling the business? I told her because she was here. I'm like, hey, you know what? what harm is it to tell like a fan of ours and i'm like no i don't really feel sad about it because i feel like that i've done my part um i'm not personally attached in terms of my own identity in this project i feel like that you know 720 suites is 720 suites wilson is wilson just because 720 suites is success successful or is a failure doesn't mean that i'm super successful or that i'm a failure it's two different identity Right. So what that means is that I'm not going to be super sad now that I sold it, nor am I going to be super proud. I'm happy that it sold to an investor who can bring it to new heights. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I think um, I'm happy and content of where it's going moving forward. 
Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I can't release too much because it's, you know, confidential to the new buyers. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, now that you have a lot more time to work on other projects, and you said e-commerce is the thing, right? mm -hmm. So, where are you going to be spending your time? Are you still going to be making videos here about mm -hmm. food and beverage? Or what's happening? So, uh, I'm not going to be making as much videos on food and beverage. I feel like that, you know, when I'm in the trade or when I'm in the industry, I, I can talk a lot about it. I can talk a lot about the nuances or the insights that I was able to gain and learn and share it with our audience. Um, and I can still create and I will, I will still create things that I truly have inspiration on and insight on but the quantity of videos that we're going to provide is definitely a lot less because I feel like that I want to be able to document the next part of my journey within e-commerce. So for the people that are interested in that journey, I would want to continue to develop, share with the people what we're able to learn throughout each and every single lesson uh, in our new channel. So I'm not sure if the video is up, if this is going to be out yet, if you guys like it, definitely go check it out here. Otherwise, you know, um, check it out next time. Yeah. So we're going to be able to document that, that journey, the building an e-commerce, building a branding business, everything that we've been able to learn throughout the years all into this channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good buy. It's not a good buy. Not a good buy at all. I mean, I, I love documenting the whole journey, even within this whole food and beverage journey. I, in the last three years, as you can see, like from the very first video that I decided to upload, you know, my aspiration, the whole vlog on, on building 720 suites, I did that for a whole year, every single week without fail. That was a lot of commitment. Um, now looking back, I'm like, it's pretty surreal because, you know, from declaring that and putting that out in the world just three years ago to today, it's a full circle that we talked about something that we want to do and then now we have a closure. Although we are short, but it is still an amazing achievement by far that we are able to achieve because how many people can say that they have built multiple locations, let alone selling it out to another party who can bring it to new heights. I don't think a lot of people can say that, right? And have the have the tenacity nor the commitment to be able to see through a project. A lot of people just run their business to the ground because of their poor doings, because of their poor habits and bad, bad practice, com competition, and they lose faith, they lose steam and everything. But with us, you know, it's a really, really great project that we worked on. We learned tons of things. There were so many ups and so many downs. Like so many times we were so close with getting into bankruptcy um yeah and it's just crazy to to think of how far we're we have actually been able to achieve and, and gone so far uh, so ending us off hmm? a crazy story a crazy story a crazy most story. Memorable story most memorable story uh you always tell you always tell everyone about how you guys didn't have a till in the very first right, day, but right, there's right. going to be more crazy stories. Okay, I want to share one crazy story with you. Is that not a crazy story? Huh. Crazy story. Surprising story. Surprising story. Oh, you know what? I want to adjust it to the camera right away. I think a surprising story is when we were able to work with Nespresso. I think Nespresso is a really, really big national, actually global brand out there. And for us, that when they first reached out to us, we we're like, we're a super small potato. We had aspirations to work with the major brands in the world. Um, but for them to reach out, I was just having double takes. I'm like, oh my goodness, like, is this the Nespresso with George Clooney in it? Like, and after months of collaboration and months of going back and forth, we were actually able to settle in a collaboration with Nespresso. And that itself is a huge, huge compliment to a brand like ours, like a local brand that we started with just one idea and we're able to work with a brand that's working with like A-listed celebrities. Um, and it's just really surreal for us. Uh, not that it's the easiest journey nor the most rewarding, but at the end of the day, it just 
having the experience to work with these brands is something that I never heard, heard thought of in the very beginning so at the end of the day i think like for those of you on the other side who who aspire to become someone or build something for the world to to impact the world or have your recipe to bring it out to the world i think you know never give up really just go and continue to consume these videos not just mine any videos out there be it as uh, as much like a sponge as you can to soak up all the knowledge and to be able to bring good stuff to the world i think that is super super important um, with 720 Suites, I'm super proud to say that now we have we have sold it and that um, we are moving to new projects. Uh, and yeah, that's super, super exciting. And it's just been so much, so much work that we have put in. And yeah, I think it's it's a really, really great lesson. Yeah. Cool. So see you soon. See you soon, guys. See you soon. And we're going to create a few more videos along the series of, of this. I know if you guys have any questions with the sale, if you want to know how the details of this sale, feel free to leave in the comment section below. I'd love to share everything that I've learned throughout the journey with you um, so then that way you can benefit from it, so then that way you can create um, this dream of yours. Uh, I'd love to share everything with you. I have nothing to hold us back anymore. Um, so yeah, leave me a question below and if you guys like this video, make sure you smash the like button. This is the first time getting grilled by Jason behind the screen, so um, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, if you guys want to check out or you know join our next part of the journey with the e-com, definitely check it up here. Um, if at the time of posting this video is not out yet, check back next time. We're definitely already starting to build more videos for this new channel of ours. Nonetheless, I'll see you guys real soon.